Hey guys, this is week two of my sort of odd videos. I have just gotten back into town after being away for the reason I mentioned in the previous video, and now that I am back, I am immediately jumping headfirst into Samurai Warriors 5, which has just released, so that I can work towards completing a review for it. In fact, due to the time frame in which I'll be putting this particular video together, I may end up showing some of my Samurai Warriors 5 gameplay in the background. But with that said, there is an interesting topic I want to sort of dive into here, and it does relate a bit to the release of Samurai Warriors 5, being that it is so heavily themed around the life of Oda Nobunaga. This is going to be a bit more of a discussion video in a sense, as I want to talk a bit about an argument I have started to see gain more traction recently. This being in question to, realistically, how influential was Nobunaga really at the Battle of Nagashino, with his tactics regarding firearm formations. Now, this is by no means a new argument, as I'm sure people have been debating this for years, but I at least want to give my take on it because there is a bit I personally want to say about it. Oda Nobunaga is by far one of the most significant figures in Japanese history, and by all accounts he left a great influence on the country, both leading up to and after his demise. Not only were his military achievements great, but he also did much to reforge society, the economy, and nation's infrastructure, paving the way for continued development even after his death. And this was all done in pursuit of his grand vision of a unified land. Yet even though so much can be said about him, being that he is the first of Japan's three great unifiers, what often gets attributed to him the most is his important role in revolutionizing the face of samurai warfare in the later years of the Sengoku Jidai, specifically when it came to the use of firearms on the battlefield. Now to give a bit more background knowledge before jumping into the actual debate at hand, in 1543, Europeans first arrived in Japan, bringing with them superior firearms which were quickly seen to outclass the types of Chinese hand cannons that Japan had been using prior to this. It took a while for these new designs to spread across Japan. Largely, it was through trade, but later, finally through Japanese weaponsmiths who began to copy and reproduce them, adding their own improvements. But eventually, as more and more samurai clans got their hands on these new powerful weapons, a common question emerged how to best use them in battle. Samurai warfare had developed far more differently than that of European warfare, so the answer to how to use them efficiently was not an obvious one. Instead, we initially see them used in groups to provide additional ranged support, even more effectively utilized when defending a fortification. It appears the Japanese may have applied the same principles from their previous experience with Chinese hand cannons to their use with Western-style firearms but quickly they began to see how much more effective they really were. Their range, make, and accuracy was far superior, but also their simplicity was not overlooked, as it was far easier to train a soldier to use a gun than it was to train them to use a bow. This played right into the role of Ashigaru foot soldiers, the main body to all Sengoku period armies, being that they were common foot soldiers who had not trained their whole life like their samurai leaders had. It was far easier to put a matchlock in their hand and give them a few simple instructions on how to wield. It. But still, for quite some time they were not used in mass, for what I believe is a variety of reasons. From lack of supply, not having enough either traded for or made in Japan, to the nature of samurai warfare, which incentivized a close quarters style of combat to claim heads of defeated enemies. The development of firearm tactics seemed to sort of be stagnant for a time, as they would be used when necessary in obvious scenarios to provide heavy fire support. However, change was coming, and it was coming fast. From 1570 to 1580, Oda Nobunaga, after seizing the capital Kyoto, was at war with the faction of militant warrior monks known as the Iko Iki throughout various temple fortresses that followed the Joro Shinshu sect of Buddhism, with their most grand and deeply entrenched fortification being the temple fortress of Ishiyama Honganji, located in modern-day Osaka. Ishiyama Honganji would endure an entire decade-long siege by Oda forces, not only through its impressive defensive structure and network, but also due to the aid the Ikoiki monks within received from sympathetic allies who wished to support the Ikoiki in their war against the Oda. But above all, one of the most significant factors in their defense against the Oda were how the monks of Ishiyama utilized matchlock weaponry to their advantage. 
Now, firearms had been used plenty of times before when defending castles or strongholds. This was not a new concept. However, what was significant was the way in which the monks of Ishiyama did so to great effect. This was all supported by what I consider to be three main factors. First off is the obvious. Ishiyama Honganji was an extremely impervious fortification that really lended heavily to ranged infantry defending from inside. Reason number two was the sheer number that were used in mass to fire down at the assaulting enemy, creating a grand roar of guns that blasted down at those trying to make their way towards the walls. And the final factor was the rapidity of their firing rate. Having monks behind with loaded guns to fire after the first wave created a system of rotating fire. This worked to provide a near ceaseless rain of bullets down at any attacking force. This is what a lot of people have begun to say is the true revolution to Sengoku period warfare, as it is this that would later go on to influence Nobunaga in his tactics at Nagashino in 1575. Nobunaga followed each of these three ideas at Nagashino. He established defensive fortifications using wooden palisades, amassed massive detachments of Ashigaru aimed with matchlocks, and had them positioned with waves three ranks deep so that they could utilize a rotating fire tactic. Although the Takeda cavalry at Nagashino did break through at several points along the Oda line, it is largely believed that this strategy is what effectively broke the main impact that would have been the Takeda charge, and thus it is this that is most often seen as the main takeaway from the battle. This then later leads into other conflicts that use similar firearm tactics, all of which generally said to have been influenced by some degree by Nobunaga's arrangement at Nagashino. And before I get into my own arguments and thoughts, it is here I want to first address for those of you who don't know, this is where the initial debate begins. Who really revolutionized matchlock use in samurai warfare? The monks of Ishiyama or Ora Nobunaga at Nagashino. You can easily see that it was the monks who influenced Nobunaga. Their tactics had a profound effect on him as he saw the true merit of their deployment. Nobunaga is someone who always fancied firearms, from parading soldiers around armed with early Tanegashima, to later courting the West heavily to learn more about their customs, warfare, and to secure greater trade. He wanted to change many aspects about Japan, let alone samurai warfare, which, as it was, can perhaps be seen to be growing a bit outdated once again when coming face to face with newer military advancements like the matchlock. What the monks of Ishiyama did was inevitable, it was always going to happen at some point, and if they did not employ such a tactic, someone else would have, and my bet is that it would have most likely been Nobunaga, regardless. With firearm usage growing greater and greater across Japan as the years of the Sengoku Jidai went on, it was really only a matter of time until matchlock usage evolved to this point. But what the monks of Ishiyama did was give Nobunaga a solid blueprint something he could effectively use to set up his own strategy at Nagashino. There is a key difference in that the monks of Ishiyama were using their method during a siege, and Nobunaga was the first to really implement it on a battlefield. Yet I myself still do not question that the monks were the real pioneers. However, I firmly believe that it was Nobunaga who would come to have the greater influence over samurai warfare. And I say this largely for one key reason the people who were present at Nagashino. At the battle, you had the two men who would later succeed Nobunaga and become the second and third of Japan's three great unifiers, Hashiba Hideyoshi and Tokugawa Ieyasu, both of which commanded troops and fought in the battle. They saw Nobunaga's strategy firsthand, and it would have a great impact on them, as they easily bore witness to its effectiveness. This brings me to what I consider to be the primary example of Nobunaga's impact at Nagashino, the extremely significant battle of Komaki Nakakute fought in 1584 between those very two men, Hideyoshi and Ieyasu, in the aftermath of Nobunaga's death. Now, I did a whole video on the battle of Komaki Nagakute, so I'm not going to go too in depth on it here, but the huge important takeaway from it is that both men deployed defensive palisade networks lined with matchlock gunners almost identical to that established by Nobunaga at Nagashino. They knew of this strategy's effectiveness, and they both wished to implement it. In fact, because they knew just how formidable it was, it ended up resulting in a massive stalemate, as neither of them wished to suffer the same fate as the Takeda, who had tried to take the fight to it years earlier. 
From this point on, the idea continued to spread, as those present in this battle or hearing of it would begin implementing such strategies in their own battles. Thus we really start to see a massive shift as almost every major samurai engagement throughout the remainder of the period began to incorporate this style of matchlock battle line. It was the way of the future, and it was the obvious evolution of samurai warfare. So getting back to the debate at hand, I am one who does firmly believe that it was Nobunaga who had the greater influence in revolutionizing samurai warfare. Not that he did anything that had not been done before, or would never have been done by anyone else, but that he did, and he did so in a setting where some of the most significant figures to come bore witness to it. As I said before, the Ikoiki pioneered the tactic, but Nobunaga had the greatest influence when implementing it. What you can kind of compare it to is a song that is written by one artist but is made more famous by another. A great example is the song All Along the Watchtower, a song originally by Bob Dylan but is easily overshadowed by the phenomenal version Jimi Hendrix would later do. And that is the simplest way I think I can put it. Yet with that said, what do you think? Am I wrong? Are the monks of Ishiyama the more significant in your eyes? Is there anything you think that I may have left out in my argument? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I really want to see what you guys think. And remember, coming next week is my review for Samurai Warriors 5. But thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this one and found it to be most interesting.